Hey everybody, Jamie from the Marvel Database. Uh, episode 21, we're going to talk about Gotham. Uh, just watched that. Uh, episode 2 is coming out very... Actually, it's out now. Um, I liked it. I liked the show. I thought it was good. We're going to spend a little bit of time talking about it. Some of the good, some of the bad, some of the ugly. Um, what do you guys think? Uh, what was your favorite part? I think my favorite part's kind of a spoilery moment, but it's just at the very end when... Uh, Gordon decides to not kill the penguin. I mean, you knew he wasn't going to, but then when he doesn't, it's like this is a hardcore moment when you know he's like tricking everybody and it's going to be good. So that was my favorite part of the episode. I have to say my favorite part of the episode was when, uh, and another spoilery moment, when uh, they've got Gordon strung up and he's on the phone with, uh, was it Fish? And, uh, like he's like, oh, okay, everything's good, you know, we're going home, Jim, and uh, he's like, everything's gonna be fine, and just like gets whacked from behind. It's like, how could you not like you? Why aren't you? I whatever. It's like a classic TV-ish moment. It was awesome. I think my favorite moment was when they're in the alley and uh, they're beating up the guy that snitched or whatever on on fish, and the penguin is holding the umbrella for. Her, and then she leaves, and they're, they're like, hey, do you want to turn beating this guy? And King was just like, yeah, give me the bat, and he just starts beating him, and you can see, like, at first he's a little bit timid, but, like, he, he hits him, and he kind of gets his pleasure, and, like, you can kind of see in his mind, like, like suddenly, like, he becomes a little bit more of the penguin we know in the future, like, kind of taking delight in, in punishing and beating other people. So it's a little bit of a, a more darker moment, but I thought that was very cool. Yeah, I, I like the whole kind of concept in that regard where it's you get to see the villains before uh, they were actually like the characters that we know now because I'm almost wanting to compare almost everybody that I see in the show to the um, Arkham Asylum video game versions because I'd have to say that outside of comic books, they're my favorite incarnations of these characters. And so I kind of like look at how it's going to be like from now to later on and, like, how does that person evolve into this person? It's, it's kind of exciting. So um, I look forward to the rest of the season for that reason, really. That's one of the easiest comparisons, really, uh, to compare the show to, like, a Arkham Asylum or something, because not, not because they're really similar or anything, but because, like, they're both sort of alternate takes on what's going on in the comics... And so it's like you see the way the penguin becomes the penguin is not necessarily the way he became the penguin in the comics. And it's just another sort of like alternate way of enjoy another way to enjoy the story, another story to enjoy. One of the things I like a lot about the show is that it does feel like Gotham, like the city of Gotham. It doesn't feel like some kind of, I guess, New York. Yeah, it doesn't feel like New York. It feels like its own place. It feels like almost like the comics on screen. But it makes me think of like, uh, say, Batman Begins to me feels like someone creating a world that is like Batman but not Batman. Like the Batman in Batman Begins is not my Batman in my mind, anyway, and so when I watch Gotham, though, it does feel like Gotham. I mean, it may not be the Batman that I want, but it's still Gotham. It's Gotham City. It's the Batman yeah. you deserve. Oh, thanks. <laughs> I feel yeah, like I think it was to a point that I wanted to make, that I think this show really, you kind of see the corruption in the city. Like, you see, like, from the mayor on down, everyone is, is bad. Like, Bullock is in with the, you know, with Fish, and the mayor is, you know, uh, you know, he's dirty. The captain's dirty. It, it's just like, uh, you know, from from the top down, everyone's bad except for Gordon. And you know, that's something we we see a little bit with in the comics. But usually, by the time Batman's around, Gordon's kind of started to clean up the force. And there's corrupt corruption in the city, but it's not to the level it is right now. And I think that kind of adds to the the element and the feel of the city being Gotham instead of another urban city in America. I'm not I'm not actually sold Bullock is bad. Uh, I think there's gonna be he's gonna have layers. He's gonna he's gonna reveal later to have done things in the, the sort of we'll call it chaotic good 
uh, alignment where he's done things he didn't like, but ultimately he is trying to serve the better, the better good, um, you know, the greater good. Um, that's what I don't know. I think I'm not sold on Bullock being a bad guy. I that's agree. I'd like to see. I'd like to see him become good. Go ahead, Mike. I didn't well, mind. I was gonna say like I completely agree, and I would like to see him come become good too. Um, but I think his motivation behind his actions is he's had to do what he needs to do in order to survive. Because clearly he's like he has a huge grudge against um, special uh, special well, crimes. Special crimes Something unit. Like that. Yeah, um, and like clearly we know that later on Gordon ends up taking over that. And I think Harvey's in like certain canons is a part of that as well. But um, I think he's had to do what he thought he needed to do in order to be where he's at and maintain his level and not like necessarily either die or whatever, like he's survived. And now that Gordon's come along, Gordon's always been pretty much the um, like Boy Scout. I think one of the things that became most apparent to me in watching Gotham was how different the production value between a Fox production versus a CW production is. And I don't want to knock the CW necessarily, but I feel like they have their demographics and Fox doesn't have to appeal to the same demographics because the CW shows like Arrow and Smallville were basically soap operas, whereas Fox can produce Gotham to be more like a procedural drama, but it's better than a procedural drama because it's not as rigidly set. It's a serial. It's a serial rather than this episodic, like... Solving the mystery, everybody's happy at the end, law and order kind of thing. Uh, I think I would like to talk about my criticism of the show so far, and that is that basically every side character that we've seen so far is a future either villain or supporting character of Batman. And I, I don't know that I really care for that that much. It's not like every person that Jim Gordon runs into in the city is going to be like, oh, and there's the guy that turns into the Clock King, and there's the guy that becomes the Killer Moth. And, you know, you get the Riddler, and he's like, they're like, oh, hey, guy that tells puns and tells, you know, little riddles. Like, and, you know, like, I don't think every character needs to be related to Batman or the comic version. I think they need to build kind of their own canon a little bit before they get just, you know, stuck and, you know, trying to pull out more obscure characters because they've, they've either killed or, or used everybody. They need to kind of build their own side cast. Now, I don't know all canon for Batman, but was Fish a Batman character at all? No. She's unique, no. isn't she? Kind of. Because I, I don't like her. But I agree. They, they have a lot of, like, big name characters that they dropped in the first episode and, like, who's this little girl? Um, oh, Ivy. Well, gee golly, Ivy, who do you become when you grow up? I have no clue that clearly you're this ginger little plant-watering normal <laughs> person who does not become Poison Ivy. Clearly not. It changed your name, though. Yeah, that's upsetting. But I think it's like Kyle says, they, they, do, they drop the names and they make them... They make it really obvious who the characters are, and then when they have the opportunity to fill out the cast with like n new creations, they make them like over the top scenery chewers like Fish Mooney, which isn't which doesn't help them, says me, because then I don't care about Fish. I just want to see more of the other people. And I think like we were saying the positive things about the show were mostly penguin related at the very beginning of this episode, and I think that's one of the... He's he's a breakout character, kind of. He's a very... I thought he was going to be kind of a crappy actor or a crappy performance, but it turned out that I like him the best of all of the bad guys because he's the most compelling in some ways, and he's the most realistic, despite being a character based on a bird. <laughs> but, you know what? It's, you're right. Um, like... He was the only character that was given, like, side character that was given any real justice in that whole first episode in my eyes, because I haven't seen the second one yet, clearly. But they could have completely done away with the whole Enigma scene, because, like, nothing would have changed if you had just removed that. Like, erase that minute and a half, 30 seconds, whatever it is, 
nothing changes. But the, the, the Penguin sections of the episode were key and important. So, you know what I mean? I think, I think the supporting characters like Fish Mooney, uh, although right now, you know, she's a scene-stealing hack, as uh, uh, they would say in Galaxy Quest, but um, um, even though she's she's a bit more of an attention, I think part of that is because of the actress they cast, obviously, they're probably paying her a lot of money to help draw some sort of audience, but I think that there's room for new characters to uh, carve out in the show and in the lore and in, in this um, sort of canon. Um, if you look at Chloe from, not to keep going back to, to Smallville, but if you look at Chloe as a character in Smallville, she was she ended up being one of my favorite characters by the end of the tenth season, um, and she has no you know allegory in the, the in the sort of uh, you know comic book canon. Uh, she as well took a little while to grow on you, but you know by second or third season, she's probably one of my favorite characters. Yeah, and I don't know. Well, I don't know who they could bring into this world as a new character that could affect the storyline as much as she did in Smallville, and still like, I don't, yeah, let's get some good writing in there, and we'll see what we can do then. Because I, I don't know how they could do it. It's a good thing you're not a writer on the show then. That is a very good thing. I will keep my day job. <laughs> Male model. <laughs> right. You model like letter mail, or is it like it's, FedEx, it's, or what kind of mail? Beard modeling. I do well, beard modeling for Pube Face Weekly. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's lovely. <laughs> where, um, where are we going now? Yeah, I, I don't know how you follow that one up. That one's pretty, uh, pretty good. So, where do we want to see the show go? What, what what's next for the show? What 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 would we like to see um, in early Batman lore shown us uh, to us on screen? Well, the, I, I I'm only saying this because I would like to see it after I heard that this is what they were doing. But rumor has it that Victor Saz is going to be showing up in the show, and that is kind of cool because he is one of the Batman villains that I feel like is realistic, but, like, crazy at the same time. Um, Like, I like the Joker for that similar reason. Like, I could see, not necessarily with a face paint, but I could see a villain like the Joker working in a reality. Like, I don't know. Like, it's more... Those characters are more realistic than, like, say, Freeze or anything like that. But I would love to see um, Gordon go up against, like, a psychopathic serial killer like Victor. I'd like to see the Court of Owls or something like the Court of Owls, like the Religion of Crime or something. I'd like to see some kind of deep, ingrained, Gotham-based thing that like, that will bring us more into the city and less about the characters. Like, That's one of the things I enjoyed, especially about the Court of Owls or even about all-Star Western, the latest volume of All-Star Western where Jonah Hex and, and the guy who created Arkham Asylum solved mysteries in 18th century, or I mean 19th century, which is totally getting off topic, but anyway, my point is that I like making the city more of a character and making a group of bad guys who are associated with the city more than just some wacky character. I want to make that more of a I want to see that more in the show. But you, you mentioned Arkham. Um, one thing I always wanted to see and I thought would be really good for a, a TV series was to have an, an Arkham series about what goes on inside, like, Arkham Asylum. So to see more of that, to see more Arkham Asylum inside of um, Gotham would be interesting, to say the least. I think what I want to see is kind of similar to that. You kind of you get the like I don't want to see villains in every episode, but I want to see characters like the Penguin and the Riddler and characters like that that they've introduced, and I want to see them kind of like their descent or what you know their 
their growth into crime, into their, you know, insanity, and kind of like, like the Riddler in the first episode is he's working in the police station as the, you know, the CSI type guy. I want to see what makes him kind of go from working for the good guys to, by the time Batman shows up, he puts on a green costume with question marks and becomes a supervillain. Like, what does it take to go from CSI to, you know, tights wearing supervillain? I want to see that that journey from everyday person to costume wearing, you know, psychopath. I want to see that in the episode. Well, if if you believe the Jim Carrey version, it doesn't take a whole lot. Oh, zing. <laughs> Um, what else do I want to see? Um, yes, that's what I asked. <laughs> let me think out loud as I ponder. I don't know. Superman? <laughs> yeah, that'll happen. Now, one thing that troubled me, I keep saying troubled a lot, but one thing that bothered me about not the show itself, but the promos for the show were... The little speeches by, I don't know if they had them in the U.S., but they definitely had them in Canada, where it's Gordon is narrating and he says stuff like, guess how the bad guys go bad. It's this city. Dun, dun, dun. And you're like, to me, that's not really what the show is about. That's not what the show is about. The show is about the city. It's about him reducing corruption in the city and fighting it and all that stuff. Because it's it's not a show about how the bad guys go bad. We already know that, kind of. It should be more about how the city makes them bad. I think you can have both at once, though. You know, you can have yeah. Gordon, you know, fighting on one side of the coin to, to clean up the city, and you can have the, the common criminals kind of descending into, like, even worse, into even darker places. While Gordon tries to bring the city into the light, these guys, you know, sink even deeper into the darkness, and you know, it's kind of two sides of the same coin, I think. You've made that sound so beautiful. <laughs> Thank you. Um, what about if they introduced uh, Hush? What was his name? Thomas Snow. Tommy Elliot. Yeah, that was because he was supposed to be a childhood friend of Bruce's. That would like, be interesting. Pre. Parent death, you know, Hush would be an interesting character to have on the show, but that's like way later in his life, so I don't, they couldn't do that. Well, this is a criticism I have of the show, again, is that I think a lot of people have this criticism, but the, the bad guys seem to be much older than Bruce. Like, even Catwoman yeah. seems older than Bruce, which well, is. Pe Penguin, I can see that, but you're right. Yeah. Riddler, he'll. If he ages at the same rate as Penguin does, Penguin's always been portrayed as fairly like older. Yeah. Well, it just we seems have Batman, like... we'll have Batman. We'll have fifty-year-old Riddler. Yeah. <laughs> and we'll have seventy-five-year-old Bullock. So there you go. Yeah. Yeah, it's kind of skewed. So it just seems like they're the continuity of like when they become the bad guy or how or. It's it's not going to be as, which is ridiculous. It shouldn't be this way, but it's not going to be as solid on the show as it is in the comics, even though comics have this weird sliding scale of time. So, Unless, unless Batman becomes Batman at, like, 19. That is also a thing. I'm but Batman. that would make us angry. <laughs> you haven't seen it, don't knock it till you rock it. Ten-year-old Bruce Wayne becomes Batman. <laughs> And that's it for our episode 21, talking about Gotham. Looking forward to uh, next week's episodes, of course. Let us know what you thought of uh, the first two episodes in the comments. Uh, as always, a pleasure. We've got Mike, Rab, and Kyle with me today. Uh, have a great one. And that's a wrap for another episode of the Comic Book Showcase. Join us again live via chat or Twitter next week. Like us on Facebook or follow us on Twitter. And to learn more about today's topics, check out the Marvel and DC databases on Wikia the ultimate resources for comic book information anywhere. Oh, God. Um, when Selena, when she stole the milk and she, like, came down, she was going to feed it to the cats, she takes out the container, she puts it down, she pours out some milk and she puts it down, there is literally, like, this much milk left in the container. And I'm <laughs> sorry. Either she stole someone's fresh new milk that 
evaporated over the journey, or she drank it, or dumped some out somewhere. But if you drank that much milk, you would not be running around. Trust me, I've drank a lot of milk, and you don't go, like, hopping around on rooftops afterwards. You want to take a nap. <laughs> can, can I ask you a question, though? Can I ask you yeah. a question? Can you hop along rooftops before you drink milk? <laughs> mm, yes. 